dark And it's hard to see What you are doing Here in the ruins And where this will lead Oh, but I know
Good evening, good evening, good evening. Uh, this is Cabello Masalesa, aka Mr. Fresh. I am your host for the week, and it is an honor to definitely welcome you to the Week of Gratitude. So, this Week of Gratitude happens, but it's a quarterly event. So, this happens quarterly, four times a year. And I'm glad and honored to say that this is our third year as Rooted. And I am happy to be the host this week. <laughs> um, as we were saying, this week has just been a three upon three upon three. So we have three speakers. We have three sessions on Friday. And we are celebrating three years. So um, I hope that the week has been amazing for you because it has been amazing for me too. So recap, Monday it was Testimony Mondays and we had testimonies. And what we learned is that Holy Spirit is always with us and he's saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yesterday, we had Pastor Blessing sharing with us. And what we learned is that when we are having an atmosphere of thankfulness or gratitude, we actually... We, we actually end up having a story where the Lord would say, I want to testify about you. Sure. What a revelation. So I was thinking about yesterday and I, a scripture came to mind where it, it's in Psalms 119, where it says, your testimonies are my heritage or my inheritance forever. So it seems as if like, because as a community of believers, the testimonies that we experience, we take part of that too. So I am glad that I get to also introduce our speaker for tonight and let me read a bio. So her name is the beautiful, really Brilu, <laughs> Brilu Shangwan. She is a young girl who is still finding her way through the rocky trails of life with the wonderful help of Holy Spirit. She's currently doing her first year in creative technology at Open Window Institute. And she adds, and she's adding this as a side note saying, she does not know how to explain what she's doing, but she has an idea. Therefore, that is Brilu, strong one for us. Therefore, Miss Brilu, I hand over to you. Um, yay! <laughs> Hello, everyone. I hope you can all see me. I hope you can all hear me. I hope I'm audible and everything. Can you guys hear me? Am I? Uh, can you guys hear me? Hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay, yes, my name is Brilu Thongwani. Um, I'm very honored to be sharing today and to be able to see everyone and to share with everyone the word of gratitude. So just to kickstart everything, because I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to add on to what Pastor Blessing was sharing with us yesterday regarding gratitude, regarding Thanksgiving, and the message of David, and how the Bible says that David was a man after God's heart. So I just want to share a bit on that and just build from what he taught us yesterday. So today my message is based on the power of gratitude so the power that gratitude holds in the kingdom of heaven so as we for those who weren't here yesterday um yesterday pastor blessing shared um yes okay before i do that before i share on the power of gratitude and everything like that i just want to open with a word of prayer so that we invite the holy spirit so that it's he who's speaking through me and he who is um, orchestrating the entire session. So let's just bow down our heads in prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we want to give you honor and glory, mighty God, for there is none like you and there shall never be anyone like you. You are the great I am. You are the beginning and the end. Heavenly Father, you are Alpha and Omega in our lives. Mighty God, we just want to thank you for this present moment. We thank you for the gift of life and we thank you, Father Lord, for the ability, Heavenly Father, to be here and sharing and listening to your word. We thank you for the gift that you've given us as your children to be able to freely share the word, to freely listen to the word without persecution and without um, distortment, Heavenly Father. But we just want to thank you in this present moment and we ask you, Holy Spirit, to for you to guide the way of today, Father Lord, for you to speak through me, mighty God. But not only that, but speak to your children's hearts. For those who have come with hardened hearts, I pray over their hearts so that they can listen to your message, Heavenly Father, as you have um, preached it to me and you have taught it to me. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so the power of gratitude. That's what I'll be sharing with you today. Um, so I just want to kickstart, uh, kickstart us with reading the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 18. Um, so yes, I'll be reading it in the TBT version. So it's 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 18. It reads as follows. And in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks, for this is God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus. I'm going to read it again. And in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks, for this is God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus. So we learned yesterday that the secret that David had for him to be called um, a man who is after God's heart is because of his gratitude, his thanksgiving, his ever thanksgiving. And today we just read the word of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, where the Bible says, and in everything give thanks. And it is quite hard, if I'm being honest with you, to be able to give thanks in everything, right? We understand giving thanks in the good things. You know, you received a job, um, Life is going good, good health and everything like that. But the thing is, the Bible says in everything, give thanks, not only in the good, but also in the bad, also in the hard, also in the difficult. Always give thanks. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, give thanks. It takes, and then that's when you get to realize that it takes faith to be ever grateful, to be ever thankful, to thank God unconditionally, regardless of circumstance, regardless of where you're at, regardless if it's a good season or a bad season, but you ever giving thanks, it requires faith. Because the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse one says, but faith is the substance of things hoped for and the assurance of things not seen. So you giving thanks for those things that you have not yet seen already provides a way for the Lord to provide for you. You know, one man of God said that you giving thanks, it's you allowing God to give you more of what you've already thanked him for. So you giving thanks to God for 10 rand and you genuinely giving thanks to God for 10 rand, then God knows to trust you with 100 rand. And you giving thanks to God for a hundred rand. God knows to trust you with a thousand rand and so forth and so forth. So then just thinking about that, you get to see that it truly takes faith to be ever thankful because sometimes it doesn't make sense to be thankful. Sometimes you don't see a reason to be thankful because nothing is going well, nothing is going good. So what is this power of gratitude? I want us to go to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 19. So Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 19. I'll be reading it in the, uh, in the New King James Version. But actually, I'll start from verse 17, which reads as follows. Though the fig tree may not blossom, no fruit be on the vines, Though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, 
though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in God, in the God of my salvation. The Lord God in my, is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on my high heels to the chief musician with my stringed instruments. I thought I would be happy by now. I thought I would be happy from January to December. I have had less, nothing less than sorrow and pain. Why am I thankful? Why should I give glory to God? Why should I be grateful? You know, it's very difficult to see the faithfulness of God in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of trouble. But God reassures us that in everything, when you give thanks, genuinely giving thanks, he sees it and he truly hears it. You know, I want us to go back to the book of Job, where we read of a man. He was a very wealthy man. The, the Bible documents him as being a very, very wealthy man in the East. He was a man who feared God and really um, hated evil, one might say. But then the Bible says on a certain day, something tragic happened to this man. All his, all his children were killed by the sword his animals, his cattle, his investments, everything by the sword. This is in Job chapter one. This is the story of Job. This is a story that many teach of when it comes to losing, but still remaining faithful to God. And it's very important to God what we do in the midst of waiting. So in the midst of exercising your faith in the Lord, even though you don't see what you've prayed for, the gratitude that you hold is very powerful because it's, if you are not grateful, that means you're harboring anger in your heart. You're asking God, why me, Lord? Of all the people I've been faithful, I've been nothing but a good servant to your kingdom. Why me? It's very important to see what we're filling our hearts with in the time of waiting. Because it is those things that you fill your heart with that might become a blockade to your blessings. So instead of giving thanks, instead of being grateful to the Lord, what are you saying? What are you uttering? What is your heart saying to the Lord? That's why thanksgiving, gratitude, should be a culture that we practice very often in our hearts. But I want us to go to the book of Job, chapter one. I believe this is the last mm -hmm. verse. Job chapter one, verse 20. So as I said, it's the story of Job. And this was the time when he had lost everything. He had lost his children, his investments, his animals. You know, he has lost everything. But we should pay close attention to what Job does in the midst of it. I believe that this should be something that we learn from Job. You know, uh, this should be for someone who feels like they've been offended, that, um, that maybe um, they've been offended by the Lord. And you're saying, Lord, I have served you. Lord, I have given you my all. Lord, I have preached. Lord, I have... You know, you're listing all the things that you've done to the Lord. I want the story of Job to be sort of an encouragement or to teach us something about what you do in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of trouble. So this is Job chapter 1, verse 20. It says, Then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped. Hmm. That's interesting. So Job, you lost everything. You lost your children. You lost, uh, you know, favor with man. You've lost your investments. You've lost everything that you had and you worshiped. That's funny. That's funny, Job. I don't think you realize the calamities that you've just 
people and people you, you don't realize, you know, what has happened to you. What do you mean, Job, Job worshipped? The Bible does say that he fell to the ground and worshipped. And then reading verse 21 to 22, it says, And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. The power of gratitude. Many of us in that situation, if we would have ever put ourselves in Job's shoes, I believe we would have either cursed God or, you know, uttered some things that we shouldn't have. We would have, you know, um, regretted sometimes choosing the path that we did as Christ as Christians. But the fact that even in the midst of difficulty, Job remembered that my joy comes from the Lord, not from what I have, not from what he has given me, but from him himself. That's why it's okay, even if I lose it all. Because the joy that fills my heart when I praise him, when I rejoice to him. And, and that's the secret that David had. That's the secret that David withheld, that God was able to say that this is a man after my heart. Because he rejoiced me like nobody else. The fact that when the ark was returned to Jerusalem, David danced like a madman. The Bible documents that David, David was dancing like a madman, rejoicing to God. That even his wife was like, why are you doing this, David? You are embarrassing. You know, the you're embarrassing you being a king. People are looking up to you and you're dancing like a madman. Not knowing that David's peace, David's freedom came from rejoicing to the Lord. You know, in every man's life as a Christian, we go through a day that is called the days of adversity, the days of trouble. And it's not a time that many of us desire, but it's a time that we many experience. You know, it's a time of difficulty. It's a time of hardship. It's a time of disappointment. But the Bible tells us that it's in those moments we should draw strength and still say, Thank you, Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, and in everything, give thanks to the Lord. The power of gratitude. The power of gratitude. When you master the fact that seasons change, just like in South Africa, I believe we have four seasons, summer, winter, spring, autumn, just like every other season is different from the other, summer will never be the same as winter and winter will never be the same as autumn. Neither will autumn be the same as spring and all the other seasons. And in every season, there's a change that happens. Just like us in our lives, using that analogy, just like us in our lives, in every single season of our lives, we go through changes. We go through difficulties, hardships. There's goodness in it also, yes, we thank God for goodness. We thank him for goodness. But there's also difficulties. In every single season, there are changes. But one thing we should remember, God, in all those seasons, never changes. He remains the same. So regardless of the season, I will remain thankful. The power of gratitude. The power of saying, thank you, Jesus. If I may ask how many of us today woke up and said, thank you, Jesus, for life. Because many of us, you know, many of us or many in the world didn't see the day that you're seeing right now, witnessing what you're witnessing right now. The ability to breathe in itself is a gift from God. How many of us have taken the time to say, thank you, Jesus, exercising gratitude, exercising thanksgiving. How many of us have taken a moment in our day to say, thank you, Jesus, for the food I eat. Thank you, Jesus, for the bread. Thank you, Jesus, for life. Thank you for shelter. Thank you for air. Thank you for the ability to exercise my lungs. Thank you, Jesus. 
the power of gratitude, the power of it. Um, uh, Gabriel, I don't know how many, how long I have. I don't know. Have I surpassed the thirty minutes? <laughs> um, I don't want to go over. Ah, uh, no, 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 you haven't gone. You started at twenty past. Okay. Okay. Great. Um. So yes, the power of gratitude, you know, and it's so important to understand that with faith, it's so easy for you to trust God. And in you trusting God, it's so easy for you to even thank him for the little thing that he does in your life. For instance, if I were to, if you were to ask me for a hundred rand and I were to bless you with 10 rand and say, this is all I have at the moment. It depends on the type of gratitude that you give is how much I can trust you with next time. So if you say, Oh, yeah, thank you so much. Even though I wanted like a hundred rand and you only gave me 10 rand. -ish. You know what? We can, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, but thank you, but thank you. Or if you say, oh, wow, thank you so much for the 10 rand. Oh, we thank Jesus. We thank Lord for this 10 rand. I'll be able to trust you the next time to say, okay, I don't mind giving you a thousand rand next time because I know that the gratitude that you give or the gratitude that you exercise whenever you receive even the smallest things. That's how God feels. Even in the small things, God says, let me see with this. Let me see how much she notices or he notices that I've blessed her with this much. Let's see the gratitude that he or she exercises when I give, her the, when I give them this much. And if you exercise the gratitude that the Bible tells us of, being thankful in everything, then God will say, okay, I can trust you with more. One man of God actually said that Thanksgiving is the key for more of anything. So the more you give thanks for a specific thing, then God knows to trust you with more of that. So if you say, thank you, Jesus, for health, then God knows, okay, I'm healthier person. <laughs> thank you, Jesus, for a roof over my head. Then God knows to provide you with provision to keep this roof over your head. The power of gratitude. Gratitude. David, in the book of Psalm 23, he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Verse 4. Even though I'm in the midst of death in itself, I will fear no evil. Because he knew who his savior, he knew who his shepherd was. And even in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death, he knew that it's in these moments that I should exercise more of this thanksgiving. I should give him all the honor and the glory, even though I don't see it, even though I don't see the provision, even though I don't see the healing, I still thank him for it. Regardless, because it is in that the more you exercise that, the more that you'll be able to withstand a lot of difficulty, a lot of hardship, a lot of temptation, a lot of trials in your life. Because, oh, gratitude is very powerful. Thanksgiving is truly powerful. And the minute you, you understand that you have that revelation that it is through the power of Thanksgiving that I am able to, that, that, Cool. that many things can be, the many doors can be opened in my life. Because if you understand it, if you're trusting God for a car, but you're not thanking him for provision, like, okay, for instance, okay, you're thanking God for a car, but you're not thanking him that, okay, God, thank you for being able to provide me with the necessities to actually climb a tra public transport. Even though you're thanking the public transport, but you're thanking, you're believing God for a car, you should thank him. Thank you, God, for the public transport. Thank you for the money to be able to climb the public transport. And therefore, thank you, God, for that car that you've given me, even though you don't see it. That's the that's faith in itself. That is the power of faith. That's the that's why faith, it takes faith to be ever thankful, to be ever grateful. So yeah, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Thank the Lord. Yeah, thank the Lord. There's one song that I've been singing this entire week. Actually, ever since last week. And this song truly made me understand that in the midst of everything, that I'm forever grateful. And in the midst of everything, I should, I should never be silent of who great or of how great my God is, of how wonderful my God is. Because it's hard to be grateful to God. It's hard to be to be thankful in the midst of circumstance, in the in the midst of pain, of sorrows. From January to December, many of us didn't see provision in our lives. Many of us didn't see the hand of the Lord, you know, providing just like he did to our fellow brothers and sisters. Many didn't see that. Many have been praying for healing and they didn't see it. They haven't witnessed it in their lives. But being thankful, even though you don't see it, it'll help you to, to overcome a lot, you know, this message of thanksgiving, this message of gratitude, it, 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 I truly believe it is the foundation of Christianity because if we go back to Jesus feeding the 5,000 and the 4,000, um, past the blessing shared on it yesterday, and Jesus, he said, thank you, Lord, for providing. Even though it was that the food wasn't there for the 5,000 or the 4,000, it wasn't there. It was just a few loaves and fish, five loaves and two fish. But he thanked the Lord for provision. He thanked him for the food, even though the food was not there at that moment. But he thanked him for it because he knew who his father is. He knew him as a provider. He knew that he will never leave him nor forsake him. No, he's not a God who... Who fail. He's not a God who disappoints. He's not a God who, he's not man that he should lie. The Bible tells us of that. He thanked him, even though he didn't see it. And then why is it hard for us to thank God for the smallest thing, even though we don't see it? But we're able to believe him for, okay, God is, I believe God will give me that car. I believe God will give me that house. But we can't thank him for the little that he has given us right now. We can't remain grateful for the little that he has provided us with right now. But we expect him to do, to do extraordinary, beyond our imagination, to do beyond anything that we could ever think for or ask for. But we can't thank him for the little that he has given right now, the little that he has given to you right now. If you, if you can't thank him for the little, how will you be able to thank him for the big? When the big comes, is it going to be that momentary thanksgiving that, oh, thank you, Jesus, and then you leave? If you can't thank him for the little that he has given you at this moment. The power of gratitude. The power of thanksgiving. The power of thanksgiving. So, yes, um, that is all. <laughs> that is me for today. Uh, that is all that I will be sharing with you guys today. I don't want to go beyond this because I feel like if I go beyond, I'll be speaking from my own understanding and from my own knowledge, which, yeah, we need the Holy Spirit to help us and to guide us in all of this. So this is where I stop. Thank you so much. And God bless you. Woo! Ms. Brillu, thank you for such a timely word. Thank you for sharing your heart and mind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for allowing Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to lead you to lead. Thank you for that. Um, so I just wanted to ask everyone, is there any question or any comment that we would love to ask Ms. Brillu? And please raise up your hand and you shall be acknowledged.
Wants to ask? Okay. Yeah, I'll ask first. Ms. Brillo. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, sure. When when we're talking about the culture of thankfulness and, and the culture mm. of gratitude, mm. how can I as a person learn to create that culture? of gratitude and thankfulness mm. you know it's something that i am also still learning in this moment it is something that the holy spirit is still teaching me but i believe you know starting with the small things being thankful for the little that you have the little that god has given you and i believe in you thanking him for that or you know for yes for the things that you can see in this moment is you thanking him for that will slowly but surely build a habit for you to ever be grateful, ever be thankful, because it is proven that um, practicing something for 21 days becomes a habit, becomes a routine, right? So you practicing, you know, the heart of gratitude, of thankfulness for at least 21 days, that in itself would already be planted within your heart to ever be thankful before you know it, Every morning before you wake up, you'll be like, thank you, Jesus, for life. And that's because you've built a habit in your life. You've built, you know, a culture to be ever thankful for the little, even for the little that God has given you. So I believe that is how we can build culture, you know, to ever be thankful. Okay. So uh, I have another one. Uh, okay. I don't know if people want to ask questions. We have got another one. Anyway. Um. In preparing the message, how did the message impact you specifically? Sure. So for me personally, I have this message has been taught to me by the Holy Spirit a long time ago to ever be thankful for the little that I have, right? It's because it's in the little that he's able to trust me with bigger things, right? So preparing this message and preparing you know, the message of thanksgiving in itself and watching sermons and listening to other men of God preaching on thanksgiving, it kind of reminded me that, you know, uh, what I have right now, the, the more I complain about what God has not given me, the more I start to question God for what he hasn't granted me as of yet, because I've been praying understand the more I do that the more I'm building a hardened heart that will sooner be rooted by anger so in me realizing that okay I need to continuously be thankful you know um, learning more about being thankful all over again you know allowing the Holy Spirit to teach me about being thankful and gratitude all over again reminded me that the little or what I have at this moment it is something that you know, he has like, yo, it's something that I prayed for five years ago and I've forgotten. You understand? And it's like the more that the prayer points have been answered, you tend to you tend to dumb down the thanksgiving, if that makes sense. You tend to dilute the thanksgiving. I don't know if that makes sense. So or like God has blessed you, God has answered a prayer. Right. God has answered a certain prayer. So you're like, okay, I'm no more long, I'm no longer praying about that. So I'm no longer thanking God for that. So it's like one less, one less box checked on the Thanksgiving list, and you're no longer thankful. So the thankfulness just dies down, dies down. And God reminded me that in everything I do, even the little things, be thankful for it. Because it's in the little that He can He uses just the little, you know, to bless many. You know, so yeah. Mm. All right. Um, for me, those are all the questions that I needed to ask. I don't know if anybody else has questions to ask. Any questions, any comments for Ms. Brilu? Okay, I don't see any. Mm -hmm. Any any questions?
All right, uh, Ms. Brillo, may you please end of the night for us in prayer. Amen. Okay. Can we all bow down our heads in prayer and open our hearts? Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Mighty God, I just want to thank you for who you are and who you always be in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being a good, good father. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for the little that you've given. I thank you, Lord, for all the provisions you've given us. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for life. I thank you, Jesus, for the gift of life. I thank you for the gift of salvation in itself. I thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. I thank you, Jesus. And as we're departing for the Lord and going our separate ways, I just pray, Heavenly Father, that you visit each and every one of us and you protect us, Heavenly Father, according to your word of Psalm 91, verse 11 to 12. Send your mighty angels to encamp all around us, Heavenly Father. Send your mighty angels to protect us, Heavenly Father. I pray that you cover us with the blood of Jesus Christ and the fire of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord. And may the grace of the Holy Spirit, the, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Ms. Brilu, thank you for tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Thank you for looking all beautiful. <laughs> for looking all beautiful. Thank Amen. you for doing things. And thank you for your boldness. And thank you for sharing with us. Yes. Uh, so we are about to go into song and then we can after that maybe if there's more questions after the song and then we can definitely yeah. end off the night okay mm -hmm.
Oh, what a song and what a night and what a beautiful message. Um, if you still have questions, if you still have a comment, you still have time before we end it off. And because sometimes what happens to me is that sometimes I don't have a question when somebody asks you questions and then when given some time, questions and comments can come. If you've got any questions, it is the platform is still open. But if there isn't, we can definitely close the night today. Well, if you are still thinking about questions and comments, if you don't have any, it's still okay. I just wanted to remind you, please, if you have not gotten your tickets for Friday's event, the celebration for three years, please, please get your ticket and just send a message to Rooted Ministries and they will give you all the details on how you can get your ticket and at. So I'm checking the chat box i don't see any questions don't see any comments that seems like everybody is great and winning so but let me give a 10 second i'm down so 10 9 8 7 6 5 Four, 
three, two, one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ending the night of day three. And definitely, I hope that you will have a great night and that you will sleep well and that may the Lord be with you. Definitely. This is Mr. Fresh signing out.